Thank you very much for tuning in this morning to Source FM. It's Thursday morning and I'm going to, you know what, kick off 2019. This is the first Thursday morning breakfast show of 2019. So it's a very, very special one, folks, because this one is the motivation special. That's right. I'm going to help you have the ultimate 2019. This is your best year yet, I can tell you. We've got a few sporting legends on the show for you this morning. You might have caught some of this on Coast last night, but I'm here for you today on Source FM. I'm going to relive some of the best moments as well. In fact, the best moment on Source, I think, so far, because this does come into this. Well, you'll find out about that a bit later. You're basically going to hear me test some workout songs. Now, fans of the show, yeah, I d- must be one out there. Mum, maybe, I don't know. My dad, I don't know, someone out there maybe is a fan, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, they might have heard this before, but I bet you haven't. I bet you haven't listening now, so I'm going to get that on for you, okay? Is that all right? So, who have we got on the show? I'm telling, I'm telling you sporting legends, and you're thinking, oh, all right, Ben, well, you better tell me who this is, right? I'm, I'm pretty psyched now, pretty psyched. Okay, well, I'll just tell you, because first of all, we've got a absolutely fantastic lady, Ebony Jewel Rainford Brent. She was actually captain of the Surrey um, cricket team, women's cricket team. But also she played on the England women's cricket team. In fact, the same team that won the ninth Women's Cricket World Cup. She was actually in the team when that happened. So that's fantastic. We also have a pro BMX. If cricket isn't your thing, no worries. We've got a pro BMX racer, uh, Shanae's Reed. She's a former track cyclist too. She's won the UCI BMX World Championships three times. Sorry, the game just went a bit... Should probably turn the game down a bit. Sorry about that. It's probably a bit uncomfortable for your ears. Sorry. Early morning, isn't it, as well? I know, I know. We've got Sinead's Reed. We've also got Joe Pavey, MBE. She is a, well, a long distance runner, really. A world European and a Commonwealth medalist. Five times Olympian. I tried to do five with my fingers then, but I failed. That was three. Five times Olympian. Pretty awesome. She's won the gold medal in the 10,000 metres at the 2014 European Championships. And that was just 10 months after giving birth to a second child, so pretty impressive stuff, hey? And you know what, if this isn't inspiring you, because all of these people today, I should say, are here to encourage you to get involved with sport. You know, might be running, might be cricket, might be cycling. Anyway, we're gonna get you involved for 2019. It's gonna be your year, all right? Also got cheeky message from Joe Wicks, the body coach, he's a very, very handsome man. Yeah, he's dangerously attractive, if not, you must have seen him, right? If you go into any supermarket, you see his books all over the place. Super popular guy, got a YouTube channel. But if you haven't seen him before, then Google him. Yeah, thank me later. Thank me later. Very oh, steamy, man. Anyway, that's enough on that. Sorry, Joe. It's sounding a bit weird now, isn't it? I'll crack on. Going to give you some workout motivation from Joe as well. Now, if all of this isn't inspiration enough for you, don't worry, because we have the return today of... A very, very inspirational young man. This is Max Stainton. He was the first person with cerebral palsy to reach Everest Base Camp on horseback. So what an inspirational young man Max is. Going to get him on the show again today. And his theme tune for today is amazing. I let him request his own theme tune. And it's amazing. Awesome stuff. Right, we'll see how we go with time. Because I would like to get that little workout test on. You know, I told you that. And you're thinking, "Mm, that sounds good. You probably kind of wish you had that kind of fast forward button, right? You can just fast forward to that bit. So I tell you what, I won't let you wait too long for that. How about that? Also, if you want a song request today, you are so welcome. Just text me direct on 07860-670-917. That number again is 07860-670-917. Yeah, so do it. You're very welcome to, anyway. Right, I'm going to kick off now. I'm going to get... Mm, oh, now here's the question. Who's coming up first? I think... Let's get some cricket on. Is that all right with you guys? All right, Ebony Jewel Rainford, Brent, chatting about cricket. Enjoy, guys. Don't go anywhere. Join me in the studio afterwards. We're going to get some tunes on. Oh, yeah. Hi, Ben. How Hello. are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. You all right? Yeah, good, thank you. Good. I'm sorry to uh, capture you for the radio so early in the morning. It's very evil of me, that, isn't it? <laughs> no worries, no worries. I'm definitely not on a morning bird, but I'll, I'll, because of you, Ben. <laughs> well, thank you. That's very, very kind of you. I wonder, Ebony, if, first of all, you could just 
you know, just say your full name and introduce yourself to our listeners just so they know who they're listening to, if that's all right. Yeah, no worries. My name's Ebony Jewell Rainsford Brent, uh, former England cricketer, now uh, commentator and general lover of the game. Fantastic. Now, this is an absolutely brilliant campaign that you're involved with, Ebony, here. The hashtag no boundaries in cricket, encouraging women to play cricket. And, and you know what? I, I immediately, when I saw this campaign, actually, it immediately made me think of a really related issue that we fa- I come from a kind of science background myself, and, and we face a very similar issue uh, with women in STEM. So I just think it's so worth pressing issues like this, isn't it? It is. I think it's it, what's so nice is just to see the progress because, you know, I know 20 years ago starting in the game of cricket that, you know, women didn't necessarily think it were, things were possible, achievable to be a professional cricketer, to be a coach, a commentator, an umpire, whatever it might be. And, it, and I'm sure it's the same in your field that now things are starting to move. You know, there's still a lot more to go, there's no doubt about it. But I think cricket's had a, a kind of a, an amazing moment, especially with that packed out laws last year at the World Cup. Yes. Um, you know, and, and uh, how many odd people, millions watching globally. And just to see, you know, the young girls being able to see that. It's so nice to know that now 70% of girls feel that cricket is for them. And, you know, I know it wasn't like that when I started. They, You know, it was definitely considered a male-dominated sport. And um, so I think this campaign is just about building on that and building the awareness as much as possible. And it's just great to see that so much momentum has happened. That's fantastic. And Ebony, if you don't mind me asking, I mean, what what was it like for you when you were first starting mm. out in, in what was kind of traditionally, as you say, kind of male-dominated, unfortunately? Yeah, I mean, first of all, there, were, there weren't many clubs for girls, so I played a lot um, as the only girl in a team. Actually, there was a point where I used to, t- uh, you know, put my hair under a cap to pretend I was a boy. Uh, especially in the early years of development, you could get away with it. Yes. Um, and, and generally, it's because you could to do your best to fit in because it, it, it was awkward being a girl on your own. And, you know, the older you got, you know, you had a lot of comments about, you know, girls sh- where they should be in their place. Um, and, you know, it took a lot of resilience to be able to handle those challenges. And I know that's not unique. I speak to the players like Catherine Brunt now, Catherine Cross. Uh, you know, you speak to a lot of the girls and they had a similar experience of being the only girl in a boys club. What's completely shifted now is the landscape in terms of club cricket. And these young girls are growing up with, you know, access to either, you know, um, clubs which are girl only or they're in a, an environment where it's much more acceptable to be a girl in, in a, and, and boys running around and playing at the same time. So things have changed so much in terms of the access. And, um, you know, I know how hard it was as a kid. And what's really nice to know now is that when I was younger, my role model was an Alex Stewart, as an example. Now, girls and boys role models are Sarah Taylors. They're the new generation of um, female cricketers out there. And they can genuinely become professional as well. So it's massively changed, and it's so exciting to see. Oh, that's fantastic. As you say, it's so encouraging to see this. And I've got some um, stats in front of me here, and it looks like... Um... You know, NatWest's recent report, actually 70% of girls mm. between the ages of 10 and 22 viewing cricket as a sport for everyone. So presumably that's massively increased, massively up. Yeah, I think that, numbers, uh, that number, when I heard it, like literally threw me because I thought it would be progress. I didn't think it would be that many. And I think that's obviously the World Cup as well, that so many could literally turn on their TV channels, on their radio, and it was there for them to see. It was on all the papers. And I think that must have changed perceptions. And also what's nice to hear is there's an 18% uptake since last year in terms of participation. Um, And and that's, again, you know, you think with uh, 200-plus thousand girls playing, that's a massive number. Um, So just to see that that number increasing so rapidly, I think that's what's exciting to me is that if this work, these campaigns continue, you know, another five years or so, it'll be a completely different landscape. So many players come through, young players like um, Sophie Eccleston coming through, lots of young cricketers... um, Heather Knight's maybe the closest to your way. I think she's from Devon, not quite your way, but she's yes, nearly. your closest. So, yeah, you can claim her. Take yes. her as one of yours. <laughs> we will. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you know, they're back to where the best. And I think this series against New Zealand for the championship, um, they've got three ODIs now. This is going to be kind of the marker because they've got the T20 World Cup in a few months' time in West Indies. So, uh, you know, if they can get this, this kind of back to their full formula, back to full force, I think they'll be favourites for that tournament as well. Oh, that's fantastic. And, you know, I was thinking because, you know, it is has been such nice weather recently. I just mm. think it would be great if any, particularly, I guess, if any, um, you know, if any schools happen to come across this campaign and think, oh, hang on, we could we could have a little cricket tournament with our, you know, with our girls in our school. Mm. I think that would be awesome if, if kind of more schools could get involved as well. Yeah, like hearing, well, you know, that, hearing from people like that's yourself. What's, that's what's 
that's what's so nice is Chance to Shine have been working with NatWest on this partnership as well. And Chance to Shine have been getting into so many schools, over 2 million um, kids have participated. And these numbers are just improving. So I think any schools as well who are interested... Um, and this is a bad thing to say, but I know that rounders has been taken off the curriculum. I've been desperate for cricket to just take over any rounders. Yes. Full stop. Um, and schools are now getting on board with that. Uh, and, and, I, and the reason why I say it is not to you know, disparage rounders at all, is because cricket generally now is a pathway that I think offers full professionalism. Um, so if a young girl has that skill set to, to strike a ball or throw a ball, I say get her into a, an opportunity. And, and, and now it's been taken off the curriculum. Schools are starting to buy into cricket a lot more. So I know that sounds naughty. Anyone who loves rounders, <laughs> I am sorry. But for me, I'm a, I'm a passionate cricket fan. No, that's, un, that's understandable. And of course, there's always um, you know, local cricket clubs as well, isn't there? For anyone who, you know, perhaps if any girls are listening in, and they think, oh, yeah, I'll try my hand at that. There's always local clubs you can go and check out, isn't there? Yeah, there's so many. I mean, that's what's so nice is the amount of clubs that have grown over the years. Um, and, and there's also more support. You know, you look at the, the Cricket Force, um, you know, program as well that goes in and helps kind of rejuvenate club scenes. So, you know, you, there's so much to access. There's all styles going on. Um, so I, I just think now that there are more setups available. There's more funding available to improve it. Um, so it's just an exciting time. And one thing I'm going to pick up on, Ben, though, this is for your region. Apparently sure. only 7% down your way um, have an interest in cricket, but 20%, 21% like football. So I'm just oh, going to have a challenge dear. out to your guys <laughs> and say, come on, a few more. I would like to see that in the next couple of years up to sort of 15% or so loving the, the game of cricket. Oh, we're not doing well down here. We're too busy eating our Cornish pasties, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> the sun's shining as well. I can imagine you want yeah. to be on the beach as well. Oh, that is not good. Perhaps, if it's okay with you, we'll have to invite you late, uh, later day and hopefully that 7% is up significantly. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ebony, thanks very much indeed for your time today. I really do appreciate it. I would just really like, actually, just to... Um, you know, just to ask you really if you've got any kind of key messages. That you, I mean, I know we've already been chatting all about this, haven't we? But any key messages for you to get out there, really? Um, and then, I, yeah, I'll begin to let you go, of course. I know, you're, you, you know your time is, is short. No worries. Yeah, well, I think it's just the key thing is um, just to say that, you know, that number of 70% of girls who genuinely now believe sport is for everyone, that's massive. And I think it's for us to build on that as much as possible. Keep up bring it, building those role models, opportunities, everything that can be invested um, and, and, you know, also the girls are saying that they, they'll enjoy it more if they can do it with their friends and there's that community. So I think it's about building around those clubs and the school environments as well. So anything you guys can do to keep um, with the message, I think it'll be really appreciated. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much indeed, Emily. I'll t- you know what? I'd actually love to give you, just to finish up with, if it's all right with you, a song choice. I don't know if you have any ooh, songs that you've ooh. got off the top of your head. Um, so know you know different. what? It's early in the morning. I'm, I don't know. I'm not feeling a, a rocky <laughs> song. I'm feeling maybe some sort of Lionel Richie. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, is nice. that all right? Is that too old school? No, no. That is that's ideal for a morning, it's I can right. tell you. Yeah, just anything by Lionel Richie. I don't know. That really randomly came to my head, but it feels like that sort of day. So. Oh, it's, it's, no, that's, that's always a good choice. Lionel is always an absolute most welcome isn't it? <laughs> and any playlist really <laughs> well Ebony thanks, thanks very much. much Thursday breakfast on Source FM <laughs> thinking of trying something new for 2019 maybe give cricket a go and if you want to listen back to that uh, interview with Ebony Jewelry for Brent there you will be able to find this on the show website and Facebook page as well. You can find me at Ben the Radio Guy on Facebook or pop yourself on the Source FM website and you can find the Thursday Morning Breakfast Show page there and there's tons of stuff there. A few interviews as well you can listen back to. One of those uh, interviews included is the Ebony Jewel Rainford Brent interview. Fantastic stuff. Right, coming up next then, shall we take a quick detour and hear some messages from Joe Wicks, the body coach? I think so. Here we go. If you want a bit of inspiration for exercise this week, check out my YouTube channel. It's called The Body Coach TV. There's loads of workouts from 15 minutes to 25 minutes, and I guarantee you'll give it a go. It's going to make you feel awesome, and you have a lovely day afterwards. There we go. That'll help you, right? And, of course, I didn't let Joe come on the show without getting a song out of him. Can I interest you at all in a song choice? <laughs> yeah, so I'm obsessed at the moment with Pamela Motown and just old kind of music like that. So I've been listening to a lot of Stevie Wonder and Al Green. So one of my favourite Stevie Wonder tunes of all time is Superstitions. Can I have that? Oh, of course you can. That's an amazing choice, Joe. Perfect. I knew it. I knew you'd like music like that. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thursday breakfast on Source FM. I don't know what it is that makes me 
makes me feel like this I don't know who you are But so FM, you are a superstar Yo, welcome back to the studio Welcome back to your 2019 Motivation Special Here on your Thursday morning breakfast show with me Ben Macon, that was a bit of a mouthful, wasn't it? Sorry about that. Anyway, coming up next, it is time now to invite to the show Joe Pavey, MBE. She's a long-distance runner, a world European and Commonwealth medalist, a five-times Olympian, and she won the gold medal at 10,000 metres at the 2014 European Championships. She's chatting today alongside Andy Baddeley. Andy is also a pro uh, runner. He's a pro middle-distance runner. Chatting a bit about how everybody can get involved in park runs. So here we go. Here's a bit more Motivation, I suppose. Hopefully, anyway, for your 2019. Here they are. Hi, I'm Joe Pavey and I'm a runner. Hi, I'm Andy Badley and I'm a retired professional athlete. Park Run is an absolute phenomenon. You've got 2.8 million runners taking part in a 5k run on a Saturday morning at 9 o'clock and it's been a really positive thing. And what's so exciting about this study is done by Glasgow Caledonian University and they spoke to 8,000 people who do Park Run and also use Strava, the social network app for athletes. And they found that people taking part in in this were happier, more confident, more motivated and just felt good about themselves. And like you rightly said, it's it's known that running can keep you fit and healthy, but this is all about how the social um, community of running is actually having such a positive impact on people's mental health and making them happier. But yeah, I recommend anyone to get along to their local park run you know you don't have to run it fast obviously you can try and run it fast if you like but it's all about getting along running with thousands of other people being part of that welcoming supportive running community and of of course people have also had benefits by joining Strava and tracking their runs on Strava and again that's being able to give other people encouragement receive encouragement yourself and what we're excited about is how positive it is to have the community of running and everyone being able to exercise in a supportive community fashion really yeah i think it's absolutely fantastic and actually i wasn't aware that we actually have we've got three uh, local ones uh, to, to us here actually so if people are uh, people are listening and they fancy giving this a try then there are there are ones we can do there's one in falmouth and helston as well so that's that's perfect for us here uh, so i just think it's great i mean i, I actually uh, must admit to not really being a i've heard the term before but i wasn't really aware that it was you know an every saturday thing and, and just how many there, there were it's fantastic that people can just jump straight in really and as you say jump into that community it sounds like a you know real really worthwhile thing to do and I, i'm just really interested to hear kind of what what it was that kind of you know what you love about running and what kind of drove you to kind of you know dedicate so much time to it there's loads of things that i loved about running it's, as a kid it was i never thought about it as running it was just uh, being outside yeah. um and I was constantly racing in, in the playground and all that sort of stuff. And then actually I wasn't very good at running either when I was at school. There were plenty of other people at my school better than me. Um, but then they all stopped running and I just kind of kept going. And by default, then you end up being one of the better ones. Yes. Um, but it's more that, for me, it's always been about the people. Um, it's always been about my training partners, my coach. My coach is uh, uh, the best man at my wedding. Godfather's one of my children. Um, and... Those are the people that you spend all the time with, and the running community is incredibly inclusive. So even at Park Run, Joe's talking about the, the running community, but people who wouldn't classify themselves as runners are part of that running community if they come along to Park Run, even if they walk or yes. walk and jog. Um, and it's that supportive, non-judgmental aspect of, of running that, whilst you think you might be being judged on time or anything like that, it's, it's really not the case. It's, Fantastic. Uh, everyone there knows that everyone has their own barriers or goals yeah. they, they want to achieve uh, a little bit like the london marathon like it doesn't matter if you run five hours you, people are, are doing it because they've overcome incredible things in their life or because they, they're doing it for an amazing cause and that's a brilliant thing fantastic well thanks very much thanks very much andy appreciate that i totally agree with everything andy's saying it's all about the people in the you know community you're part of and for me i've always been passionate about running and i've enjoyed like aiming for goals setting myself personal targets and aiming for that which everyone can do in the running community everyone can have their own targets and it's really fun to do that and as a mum i enjoy exercising my kids you know my little boy go on the bike and my little girl's only four going on back on my husband's bike and she started following on her bike now <laughs> and being able to get out as a family which of course you can do all going to park run together which is really a lot of fun and um yeah and really my motivation i've really found is improved by how 
the social community of running is really going from strength to strength, whether that's through park run or Strava, but being able to interact so much more with other runners and have that social support is just so motivating and it's definitely added a lot of motivation to me as I get you know, older in my career, it's really sort of made me want to keep going to be able to have all that social interaction with my running. I'm afraid this is a bit of a silly question, but I was wondering if you had any favourite songs that I could play for you at all on the show. Particularly, right, I don't know if you uh, listen to music whilst running or whilst training or anything like that. If you have any kind of theme tunes in mind, I'd love to play something for you. <laughs> if you've got something off the top of your head. Yeah. Dancing uh, on the ceiling. Yeah, I'd say <laughs> yes. I'd yes. by you t- Anything by you two, maybe Beautiful Day or something uplifting like that, one of the uplifting ones, oh, get fun. people happy. Yeah, that's <laughs> it, two cracking choices, absolutely absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah, nice, I'll get those on. Well, thanks so much to both oh, of you. Thank you. Anything that you'd like to add or is that okay your end? That's fine by me, I just want to wish you luck if you do do a part one. Thank yeah, you, yeah, I'm going to go for it. Good luck and go for it, you know, you can do it. Yeah, exactly, I'm, I'm, I'm just going gonna, gonna to go for it. You'll, you'll see me, uh, yeah, you'll see my all stats on Strava looking, looking great, I'm sure. <laughs> Well, thanks both. Have a great day. Thanks for chatting to me. Thursday breakfast on Source FM. We are in this studio being thoroughly bouncy. Hi, I'm Scarlett Moffat, and I will be on Source FM talking about sausages with Ben. I don't know what it is that makes me feel like this. I don't know who you are, but Source FM, you are a superstar. Joe Pavey, MBE, our guest just now alongside Andy Badley. Thank you very much to both of them, encouraging you to get involved with park runs, if that's something that might interest you. And as I said, of course, this is your 2019 Motivation Special. Welcome back. Welcome back. OK, coming up next then, I did warn you about this particular section, actually. So a while ago, and this was back when we had, uh, you might remember this, back when we had the... Uh, dangerously handsome Sam as my co-presenter here on your Thursday breakfast show and we tried some workout songs and this came off the back of an interview with sports scientist Dr Costas Karadjordis. He was really interested in looking at how different types of uh, music and how different songs and things impact people's motivation in sports. So he told us the number one choice and I compared that to the, what came last on this list because I just did not agree with it. More on this a bit later. I can't reveal it. I'm just going to let Costas reveal that to you now. So imagine we're asking you right now, Costas, so what is the best workout song? And importantly as well, why? Why? Well, here he is. Here he is. Hopefully this will uh, clear that up for you. The question that you never knew that you wanted the answer to. And then we're going to test them as well. Test them. This is when I test it live on air. I'm going to play it for you again. Anyway. Here he is, his costas. Top choice here for people. So they're saying, you know, in, in this survey, uh, looking at the most kind of motivating songs, this is no surprise at all, is it? Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. <laughs> That's not, not a surprise. People, people who have got sort of delusions of being rocky, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. exactly. A little montage going on. A montage. <laughs> a mo- their, their own life is a montage, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what I I'm going to ask something you, very so. special about that track, though, Ben. Yeah, there is. Um, it has a combination of what we call iconic cues. It has certain musical qualities that are motivating in themselves, but also because of the cultural associations. And when you hear it, you associate with uh, the, the protagonist in the film striving to overcome adversity. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It has you know, these very strong associations, and many people find that track uh, inspirational. I've been involved in a number of these surveys through the years, and uh, maybe one of the surveys of surveys I did with the BBC in preparation for the Olympic Games in London in 2012 and that topped the list again. So it's one that seems to be recurring over a number of decades. Oh, that's actually really fa- that's really fascinating. I hadn't thought of kind of in detail about that at, at all. Really, I kind of just you know assume it's just you know everyone everyone, everyone knows it. It's kind of like a, a running joke that it's like the Montreal song. But but as you say, you know, there's bound there's bound to be very strong uh, cues there for people. And you're saying like that actually part of the song, you know, the, the actual music musicality of the song uh, as well is actually contributing to this as well. You're saying. Absolutely. There, there are two main types of qualities. One we call the iconic cues, and that has to do with how the, the piece is composed and how it sounds. And yes. uh, in the first few bars of that track, it's almost as though you have punches flying at you with those uh, guitar stabs, and yes. that sets the mood. And then you have a really affirmative and motivational lyric 
that's set over a, um, quite a hard rock beat. Um, yes. When you look at the history of that track, there was a, a strong association between the band Survivor uh, and Sylvester Stallone, and uh, he commissioned the band to produce the track for the uh, Rocky Three film. Yes. So, uniquely, it has all of the right ingredients in, in one offering, and it's, it's rare to get that. I mean, there, there are other tracks, such as um, Chariots of Fire by Vangelis or Search for the Hero, um, but I think The Eye of the Tiger tops the pole of poles in terms of motivating tracks. Fantastic. So that, that is a good choice for people then if they, if they want to, uh, yeah, especially if, if they maybe just started up their New Year's resolutions and things and trying to stick at it. That sounds like a good choice then. Uh, you, know, you know what I'm going to have to ask you though, chaps? Uh, and that is, if you had to choose your number one motivating song, what would it be? Would it be either Tiger or would it be something different? Uh, you know, uh, for me, Ben, I, I'm a big Latin fan. Okay. Uh, and there's a version of Masconada, which was originally done by Sergio Mendes. Oh, okay. um, produced by the Black Eyed Peas a few years back. And Fantastic. I absolutely love that track. So when I start working out, I normally use that. Oh, you know, I, well, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna have to play this on, on the show, actually. Please. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a football advert that had that tune on it, I think, exactly. a few years ago, wasn't there? With the Brazilian football team. So exactly. Brilliant. That's the other, you've no got... surprise there, given <laughs> they're known as the Samba Boys. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, there we have it. I have the Tigers apparently in the number one position. And, okay, this was my problem with this because I think country music should be because that's my favorite type of music i thought nah there's no way man so we put it to the test with sam here we go here we go also those of you listening close you might have realized that i played costa's personal workout choice at the beginning of the show today ah there we have it i got it in early anyway here we are here we are this was when we tested these workout songs the number one finding, actually, from a survey that they recently were involved with, uh, was that, uh, and apparently this is a, this is a, you know very commonly the case. He's done a few of these surveys uh, over the years. Uh, that "Eye of the Tiger," Survivor, of course, uh, is the number one workout tune. And it, what comes in last place, the last place in terms of genre of music, is country music. So I think <laughs> that is. No, I'm not. That's I'm not having that. I'm going to put it to the test right now. Okay, just before we start, I'm going to put it to the test. Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna try it actually. So I'm gonna compare my performance. And Sam, you decided it would be star jumps, right? Yeah. And you're gonna measure this with the with the bells. The yeah. listeners know what's I'll going give, on. I'll give you a little bell every time Ben does a star jump. I'm not gonna give you them if they're rubbish though. So you got to give no, a yeah, star proper. Jump. I, I'll tell you what. I'll go over there and you can kind of watch. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay, excellent. So we're gonna compare my performance. So shall I start with? The country music, or should I start with Ben? I've re- we we both realised that there is a massive flaw in this design that you're going to be tired after doing the country music one. But no, I think no, we should, no, I think we should do the country fun. first it's... just to give it a head start. Okay, right, we'll do the country one. So, or we'll do the country, play the interview, and then we'll do a star jumps after the interview. So you've had a bit of a rest. Okay, yeah, we'll do we'll do the country, then we'll let them have a break. Yeah. Okay. So if you if you measure this, right? So I tell you what, I'm going to put put this song on in the background. <sighs> okay. Yep. All right, so we've got that. I'm not me. Paving long. Right. I ain't cut out to climb okay. high line poles, but. Oh, sorry, is that right? Okay. Can this stuff up. Wait, right, okay. I'm ready, mate. I'm ready. Right. Right. Um, Tell me when to go. Well, I've got, so wait, I've got a time as well. All right, let me get a timer on. Yeah, excellent. All right. Um, one minute. Are you sure you don't want to do 30 seconds? Yeah, it'll be 30 seconds. Right, it'll be 30 seconds. Come on now, baby. Tell someone to go, mate. I'm ready for this. Ready? Yeah. Steady. Yeah. Go. Do it, man. Yes. Go. I've done this with you. I've done this with you. This is how you do it. No, I'm not going to get out Yeah. Rack them up. Rack them up. That rubbish. I'm too slow. Working too fast. Racking them up. Look at this. Woo! Country music, baby. Country music. Time. Oh. Oh. All right, Ben. Okay. Okay. How do you think you did there? (sighs) Pretty well, actually, mate. I think that was... Woo! So... Get my chair back here. I realised I dinged you for once that I wasn't counting. No, nah, that's fine. So you, that's you fine. got more dings than you actually deserve. Ah, oh, right. But what did I get during your school? Yeah, you did, pretty well. you did pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. You ready? I'm ready. Forty-five. Oh, that's not bad. 
Pretty good. I thought you were about to say four. No, 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 no. You did well. You did well. Now, okay, as promised, then, I'm going to put this to the test. Just did the country music test. My previous was 45, right, and 30 yep. seconds, star jumps. So we're now going to test. That was to the country music. That was to Billy Currington. I don't think that's going to be beaten, mate. I've really uh, done I don't it. see you beating that. No, I don't think so. So, anyway, let's give this a shot. I'm going to try now with uh, the number one choice. Okay, all right, let's right. do this. So, Ben, I'll, I'll t I'll t you, you get, the, get the song going, and I'll, I'll tell you when to go. Okay, excellent. Right, my workout starting. Get, get, yourself, get yourself in a nice spot, then, yeah. Okay. Tell me when you're ready. Yeah. Okay. Alright, I'm ready. Three, two, yeah. one, go. go. Alright. Let's do this. Let's do this. Come on, come on, man. I have the tiger, come on! They're coming the tiger now. The tiger strikes again. What's faster than the tiger, mate? Because that's me, I'm a cheater. I am a cheater. Come on, rhythm, yeah, gym, workout, motivation, Thursday morning. That is your time, oh, Ben. Oh. Okay. How do you think you did? <sighs> oh, um, not as well as Billy Currington. Go on, break it to me. I feel like you found a rhythm there. Yeah? Yeah. What, so what you did at? better. Oh, okay. All right, good. <laughs> do, you know, do you want to know how much by? Yeah. You got 55. Woo! That's... Wow. That's yeah. not bad for me. I think you're looking at about 10% there. That is really, really not bad. I'm, yeah. Well, I'm pleased with that. It's kind of bittersweet, though, because I was I was hoping Billy Currington would inspire me more. He did not. You couldn't but find apparently. your rhythm in Billy Currington. No, I think that's the thing. I was looking for my rhythm. I had... I think, though, I think with Billy Currington, I would have had the stamina, though. No, would have gone all day. Yeah, right, OK. Right, OK. <laughs> just, just coming up with excuses now, mate. But, uh, yeah, yeah, anyway... Oh, there we go, there we go. Hope you enjoyed that. Anyway, you know what? We're going to have to get that song on now, aren't we? Really? Be a bit silly not to. Here we go. Let me sort this out for you. Now, as I said, if you want to get some song requests to me, then you're, oh, so welcome. A number of ways you can do that. You can get all of my contact details on the Source FM website. Pop yourself on there, Source FM, and find the Thursday morning show page on there and you can text me directly up from the details there or you can message me or whatever you can find me on facebook as well at ben the radio guy if it's safe and legal for you to do so then please do get in touch but for now i think i'm gonna have to leave you with a bit of this bad boy aren't we you know i'm thinking maybe i should have a retest of that because that's i still think that billy currington is more inspiring than i of the tiger but oh anyway maybe i'll test that again i'm not sure thursday breakfast on source fm Yo, 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 welcome back to the studio. Sorry, what am I saying yo for? Hello, sorry about that. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the studio. Okay, you know what? I think before we continue with your 2019 motivation special here on your Thursday morning science and celebrity breakfast show, I think before we carry on, you know what? I'm going to have to put that to another test because I just don't, I just don't agree with the result. So basically, I had the Tiger won in terms of workout motivation, for me personally doing star jumps. I did more star jumps in 30 seconds when I was listening to Eye of the Tiger compared to listening to Billy Currington, a bit of country music. I'm going to test that again because I think that's rubbish. There was a problem there, so I'm just not, I'm not going to stand with it. Unfortunately, I haven't got a cope to enter the studio today, so you know, you're going to have to trust me on this, but I'm going to... Maybe I'll put it on Facebook, I suppose, Facebook Live. Maybe. All right, find me on Facebook. Anyway, I'm just going to test it for you right now, right here, right now, okay? Hope you don't mind this. Sorry, I've just got to get this over with because I'm going to beat, I think it was 50, was it 55, I think, was the record for either Tiger. I'm going to beat that. I'm going to beat that, I tell you right. Let's get Billy Currington back on. And Sam, if you're listening, here's going to be evidence that it was all wrong last time. Right, okay. Get this timer up for 30 seconds and get the song on, bit of Billy Currington. Oh, baby. All right, I'm just going to wait till he starts singing because then it's really inspiring. Hang on. All right. Get in position. Ready for these star jumps. Right. Off I go. Woo. Woo. Mate, I'm absolutely powering it today. Absolutely powering it. Whoa. Come on. Come on, Billy. Come on, Billy. Let's do this. Sorry, I can't talk. Concentrating. Whoa! Woo. 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 Oh. oh, 
Oh no, that's time, that's time. Ah. Oh. Okay. Broke the news to you guys. Wasn't that good. Wasn't as good as I was hoping that. <sighs> I did beat the record, but it was only my two. So it still hasn't beaten either Tiger. What is going on? There's a flaw in this design, isn't there? There's a flaw in this design. <sighs> Billy, what? Billy's let me down again. Right, okay. Well, let's crack on with the show anyway. Coming up next, you know, I think it's time for the very inspirational Max Stainton. So if you haven't been inspired so far by the sports stars... Of course, you're not inspired now, especially now with me wheezing, like, <laughs> after doing like a few star jumps. Anyway, if you haven't been inspired so far, this is going to inspire you. This was the first person with cerebral palsy to reach Everest Base Camp on horseback. It's Max Stainton, ladies and gents. Warm welcome to him. Hi, guys, I'm Max. Um, I, I've just ridden to Everest Base Camp on a horse, um, and I've got cerebral palsy. Um, I'm 27 years old. I live in London. Uh, and I'm Ed Brater, I'm the Chief Executive of Riding for the Disabled Association and we're uh, proud to have been associated with Max's trip. Fantastic, well a very warm welcome to you both, thanks very much for this uh, Max and Ed, really appreciate this and this, you know, straight off sounds like an absolutely incredible uh, adventure <laughs> Max. Thanks, yeah no it really was, it was, uh, it was a pretty hardcore adventure, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to lie it was a lot harder than I was expecting but no it was, it was absolutely amazing, I mean the Getting there and actually achieving, you know, what what had been, you know, two years in the making was was yes. you know really fantastic feeling for everyone in the team. You know, we had fourteen people going out there with me. You know, and that wasn't you know, that's not including all the Sherpas as well. Um, so it was a total team effort. But yeah, no, it was a uh, it was just fantastic to, to to achieve it and and just all the scenery was was just phenomenal. Gosh, and I, I, I bet it—I bet it even exceeded your expectations, right? Once you got up there and saw those views, I mean, those views must be to wow. They must just be incredible. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, so you can't see Everest itself from base camp, but at base camp you're just surrounded by all these humongous mountains. They're just <laughs> you know, uh, just completely. It's like it's the greatest amphitheater in the world, really. Uh, but yeah, as you say, the, the trek up there, you just the scenery, just time after time after time, just gets better and better and better. So, yeah, absolutely phenomenal, breathtaking scenery. Brilliant, and and what an achievement uh, to 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 have, you know tossed aside all those kind of expectations and things, and and just mm. gone ahead and done it, Max. I really think that's a massive congratulations is in, in order to you, and of, of course you. as well to to your team. But make, I think most importantly to you, Max. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> Thanks. No, yeah, it was. Um, it, it's. I mean, yeah, as you say, um, like when when people see someone in a wheelchair with with, with a disability, they often. Um, put certain expectations on them. They put them yeah. off and put them in a box. And and yeah, a big part of riding Everest, apart from um, you know raising the profile of RDA and incredible charities that I've been riding with since I was five years old, yes. um, it is was to you know change people's perceptions about disability and about how you know one can achieve stuff without you know just because you're not doing it in the same way as everyone else doesn't yes. mean it's still it's still an achievement. And that's exactly what what we set out to do. That's fantastic. I think I think it will. I think it will really serve really nicely to you know as as a, as a, just a, a positive you know role model and example of, of what you. what you can do for you know other people out there. And perhaps if we do have anybody who uh, listens to this and and hears hears you speaking today, I just really hope that they're you know inspired by what you what you've done really because I mean it really That's exactly the hope. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's why I did it. Fantastic, and uh, Ed, I'll, I'll turn to you for a second, if that's okay. Thanks, uh, thanks, yep. Max. Uh, I think mm. it's a fantastic work that you do over at the RDA. I mean, is this that you were saying that this um, this particular trip was quite a long time in the making? Uh, yeah, well, um, Max has been uh, planning for this for about two years, I think, and um, uh, certainly uh, being involved with our our centre. I think Max used to ride with us in Warwickshire, and now rides with our. Uh, Group, Hyde Park Group, group in, okay. in London. Um, and uh, yes, uh, the uh, the kind of effort and, and commitment that's gone into it from Max is, is quite extraordinary. And as you were just saying, really, it, it demonstrates that uh, it, what, what we're able to do is give people the chance to prove that they can do things that people don't expect them to do at, at whatever level. So mm. Max is perhaps a slightly extreme example of that, <laughs> but um, very much what we try to achieve. Fantastic, and I believe it as, as well, which is re- which is really exciting. Actually, you you're actually in the process of uh, developing your first national training centre, aren't you? Yeah, we are, and and Max's trip was um, was also partly about raising funds for that, and mm-hmm. raised an extraordinary amount. It's currently at about sixty thousand pounds. Sixty thousand. So um, we're we're 
we're massively grateful for that, and that'll go towards uh, yes, helping us create a national training centre in Warwickshire. Um, we have about 500 centres around the country, and that'll that'll help us support our, our volunteers in those centres to to support even more people like Max to do incredible things. Brilliant. And if there are people um, listening who perhaps you know might like to might like to help out, is there a way that they can they can do this? You know, they can benefit you. Absolutely, yeah. You can go to our website, which is rda.org.uk, and you can find your, your local RDA centre there. We're, we're desperate for more support and more volunteers at every RDA centre. Uh, and if you want a bit more inspiration, you can read more about Max's, Max's adventure on, on that as well. And if you, if you just want to support us financially, you can find your way to do that uh, through Max's trip there as well. So, um, yeah, have a look on our website. And, and you don't have to have any, any previous experience of horses to get involved. We need... Uh, all sorts of different help that's fantastic and uh, yeah well thank you very much for to both of you again for coming on the show now max i was i was thinking about this actually i was i'm gonna i'm trying to imagine a uh, like an like a kind of epic theme tune for the trip to play on the show okay <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you have any ideas <laughs> um yeah what were we talking about we were talking about um like fly to the Valkyries or something. Oh, yeah, we're, yes, we're, we're, we're in, yes. we're, so we actually helicoptered off the mountain. So that, that, that those were the kind of theme tunes that we were thinking about when we were when we were flying out of there. Oh, brilliant! <laughs> Doing apocalypse now esque. <laughs> No, that's, oh, well, that's an absolutely perfect choice. I think we might just have to play that now. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much to you both of you. I really appreciate your, your time today. Uh, is there anything at all that you'd like to, you know, any any messages uh, to get out there that, um, you know, we think um, I might have missed or anything like that at all? Then please, please do. Um, yeah, just feel free to, to fire away, basically. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it, it support our DA. Um, if you want to find out more about the trek, you know, check out Riding Everest. We're on uh, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, you can donate to the Riding Everest, which goes all, all goes to RDA. Uh, just Google Riding Everest, donate, and you'll find our our donation page. Um, and and yeah, um, RDA.org.uk. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much, uh, Max, and thank you, Ed, as well. Uh, and just a, again, just a big congratulations to you in particular, Max, for thanks, for Ed. achieving that. Fantastic. And thanks. thanks for the song choice too. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, man. See ya. Bye then. <laughs> Well, thanks to Max Dainton, what an inspirational young man Max is. And hopefully this has got you well and truly inspired to have a fantastic 2019. This is your motivation special for 2019. We've got a bunch of sports stars we've heard from today. And talking about sports stars, I've got one more for you right now. This is Sinead Reed. She's a former pro British BMX racer and track cyclist. She won the UCI BMX World Championships three times. And today she's here to encourage you to get on your bikes. Try out cycling in the new year. How about that? Sounds good, yeah? Here she is. So my name's Sinead Reed. I was a former track cyclist and BMX cyclist on the Great Britain cycling team. Um, went to the Beijing Olympics and London Olympics. There's many ways to look at it. It's not all about commuting into work and, and being amongst the traffic, but just to simply get out on a Saturday or a Sunday with your family, go in a park, and ignite that flame when you were first a child and got on a bike and, you know, had that buzz again. Um, and I think when you kind of get your leg over um, a saddle and get on again for the first time, then feelings do come back to you. Um, and then there's also, you know, if you go onto the website, British Cycling website, there's a lot of information there to do a lot of group rides, um, female-only rides. There's all different kind of groups that cater for different levels of um, abilities. Um, but, yeah, it's a, it's a great exercise. Get out there and get on your bikes. If we're thinking about being greener as well, I can imagine it's, you know, massive benefit not only to yourself but also to the environment as well. Yeah, definitely. It's not just about yourself, it's about the environment as well. Um, so, like, getting on a bike and going to work and cutting down on the carbon footprint, I think it's massive. Um, but it's also enjoyable. You set your day off well. You know, you can get into the office with some good endorphins flowing in your body, um, and it'll set you up for a great day ahead. Fantastic. And, uh, Sinead, is this something that you've always, you know, ever since you were younger, felt a, a, a pull to cycling? You know, that, that, that you were talking about those feelings earlier about, you know, those lovely feelings and ignite, reigniting those, those, those passionate feelings for, for cycling and getting on the bike. Is that something which you kind of always felt yourself? Um, I think, like, when I was a child, I loved just doing all different sports, like being active in general. Yes. Um, but when I found the bike, I felt like I could... Especially with BMX, I felt like it was like a controlled, um, extreme sport um, where I could be daring 
Um, but at the same time, like I was in control of, of my machine in a way. Yes. Um, so I just had such a great time going to the local BMX track, riding with friends um, and pushing my abilities on the bike. It was always something that really, you know, kept me wanting to go back for more because I could always challenge myself in different areas. Yes, that's that's fantastic. Because I was I was just thinking as well, you know, not not only of course the importance of encouraging you know adults who are who are, you know elapsed riders, let's say, you know, know how to ride but have stopped riding to get them back on their bikes, but also perhaps as well as a reminder for for, for parents maybe to encourage their their kids to get on the bikes because you know to experience that young, you know, allow them to feel that when they when they're young, yeah, definitely. And they, you know, take it, think... take off. Yeah, I think sometimes if you're kind of trying to get a teenager, it's kind of like it's a bit, you kind of lost that, you know, that like that spark that you can get when they're a youngster. And I just remember when I first got my stabilizers off my bike and I was about five, I think, and just having that bus to think, wow, I can ride my bike without stabilizers. Um, and then it was the next step, oh, you know, mum, can I ride to school on my bike? And yeah, it was just having that buzz. And I think as parents, obviously, you have a duty as well to try and push that. Um, to get your kids on bikes. But at the same time, you know, you've got to remember the safety equipment and everything else that comes with it to be visible yes, um, to traffic out there as well. That's a very good point. Um, I just I find this really interesting as well. Uh, this, you know, this point about uh, the use of technology. Uh, so, you know, apparently there was a 39% more likely to cycle again afterwards if those people had experienced a session with a virtual reality headset. Uh, you know, showing them the cycling experience. I think that's a really cool, that's a really cool thought. Yeah, I think like some like the virtuality things is is great. Like it just shows where you know everything's heading in terms of you know the technology being put into cycling. Um, I've not personally had a go of it myself, but I've heard some amazing feedback. Um, I think you can ride alongside Chris Hoy and you know feel like you're a part of you know a part of Chris Hoy's like journey in a way. Yes. Um, so yeah, I think it kind of breaks down their mental barriers before even actually getting out on a bike. But you can actually feel what it's like and yes. experience what it's like with you know with the headset on and and go through that process. Yeah, because it, it's funny because I, I bet it's just you know probably quite you know if it, especially for people who've already been cycling before and, and maybe stopped for whatever reason i bet it's just you know that there's that kick of nostalgia and you think oh yeah this is what it's like it's actually really cool <laughs> and they're probably yeah, thinking oh, that seed again yeah exactly no, it's, it's nice nice thought i mean it's, and as, as we were saying earlier obviously that you know there are a lot of benefits to it you know not only uh for your personal well-being and, and personal you know just for fun as well of course but also for mm. the environment as well so it's nice to try and encourage uh, people back on i was just wondering as well um Sinead, it's because it's you know fantastic i think uh when there are you know really inspirational women who can kind of give messages out there to 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 perhaps uh, young girls or, or other women because you know i think one thing which is which which is unfortunately quite apparent uh, you know especially for, for myself coming from a, a science background so you know this is on our, our minds a lot about you know the the, yeah. the relative lack of, of women in science are very unfortunate we're trying to do things about this but you know and i think this is something which you know, can be addressed, you know, in all areas, really. And I'd just lo- I'd love to hear if you had any words of encouragement, uh, perhaps particularly for, you know, any young girls out there or women out there. Yeah, I think, like, whether it be in, in, in any domain, like, obviously, cycling and sport in general, you know, I know as, as a female in, in PE when I was younger, you know, the drop-off rate was quite high. Yes. And the girls yes. didn't want to get sweaty and, you know, get involved in sport. But for me, I can only say, like, getting involved in something that you, it seems is more male-dominated is, is even more empowering for a female to kind of yes. get into that world and, and give it a go because, like, for me, if I would have sat back and would have been intimidated by it, I would never have had the, you know, the life I've had and the opportunities that I've been given is has been amazing. So, yeah, yeah, becoming yeah, a world champion, going to the Olympics and things, so it really paid off for you. Yeah, massively. And at the same time, you meet some, some amazing people along the way as well. So... Um, yeah, I just say, like, don't ever be discouraged with your dreams. Like, don't ever feel like you can't do something because, you know, your friends aren't doing it or whatever. Just get out there. And if you want to do it, there's always a pathway to, you know, to make it happen. One very fun question for you. And, and this is my favourite question of them all, actually. And that is, would you like me to put a song on for you on the show? <laughs> um, yeah, I would. Um, what, let's think about it. <laughs> it's a tough um, one. It's It's not you know when it's just sprung it on you so you know take your time but you've got, well you've my got time trial song at the olympics was mr brightside oh, um by the killers so fantastic. yeah let's go with that one 
Fantastic, I'll certainly get that one. That was Sinead Reed, former pro British BMX racer and track cyclist. Sinead, thanks very much for coming on the show. And this is now coming to the end of your 2019 motivation special. So thank you very much indeed for joining me. Thanks to all of our sports stars today. Thanks to Ebony Jewel, Rainford Brent, captain of the Surrey women's team and a member of the England women's cricket team as well. Thanks, Ebony. Thanks to Sinead Reed, who we heard from just now. Thanks to Joe Wicks, the body coach. We heard a few clips from him before. A full length interview is available from Joe on the website you can find all of the details on the Source FM website on the Thursday Breakfast Show page or find me on Facebook at Ben the Radio Guy thanks to Dr Costas Carrie Georges from Brunel University we heard from him very briefly today that was all about that rather bonkers section of the show and I must apologise for that the uh, workout song testing yeah Give that a listen if you missed that. I th- really think you should. Thanks to Max Stainton, inspirational Max Stainton. He was the first person with cerebral palsy to reach Everest Base Camp on horseback. F- fantastic um, achievement, Max. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks to Joe Pavey, MBE, long distance runner and a world European and Commonwealth medalist, five times Olympian and gold medalist. Thanks, Joe Pavey. Fantastic to have you. And thank you to you. Thanks for tuning in. Now, make sure you don't go anywhere. Stay with us here on Source. See you guys. Join me again next Thursday. Thanks for being here. Oh, yeah.